Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us uh, one more time to sh dig into God's Word and share the Sabbath School lesson. Today we're going to be doing Lesson 7, and that's August 8th through the 14th, and it's Sharing the Word. I'd like to welcome Brother Mike with us. Thanks, Tim. And we'll get welcome. started. We'll get started with a word of prayer. Mike, can you open up? Yes, absolutely. Father in heaven, we want to thank you again for another great day. We thank you for your blessings and taking care of us. And uh, in these crazy times, we just uh, we ask that you'll continue to hold us in your arms and, and hold us close and safe and uh, help us to uh, know and understand and realize that you do have a bigger plan than just what's here on this earth. And we thank you. We ask your Holy Spirit to be here with us as we're um, going over this lesson. And for those that are watching, and we thank you in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So as we get started, we'd like to just, again, welcome everybody who's watching, those of you that are new and joining us for the first time. Uh, we pray that the Holy Spirit will bring a blessing as we dig into God's Word and um, we learn about what it's, what it's about as far as sharing the Word of God. That's right. Yep. How was your week, Mike? It was hectic. Hectic. Interesting <laughs> for me. Was it interesting for you? It was very interesting for me. Yeah. So. Um, a lot of, a lot of unrest right now. Yes. Yep. Starting to see um, a lot of commotion that's surrounding the issues that's going on in our world today, especially here in America. Yeah. Um, I have noticed, though, I don't know if it's kind of irrelevant, but I've seen, a, I've seen a difference between the East Coast and the West Coast, how some of the issues on the East Coast are more predominant than they are on the West Coast and vice versa. So, I don't know, I just thought I'd throw that out there. I've been paying attention to a lot of things, praying about a lot of things, and I think right now that God's timing is perfect as far as these Sabbath school lessons go because the more and more I get into this quarterly, and we're halfway through at this point, halfway through the third quarter, um, I'm really understanding that the beginning of the year, God knew how this year was going to start and play out. And so here we are in August, but the first Sabbath school was, it, it was clearly relevant for what, what we were started to experience. And then the second, and now the third, we're starting to see now as this is settling in, halfway through this year and halfway through the quarterly, I'm seeing how they're starting to line up and how God's timing is perfect because a lot of people are asking questions right now. Yeah, these, these lessons, it's interesting that you say that, Tim, because these lessons were, uh, are, are, are done about a year in advance. Yeah. Yeah. And, in, yeah. you know, th th this last week, there really wasn't, really I really wasn't anything that really stands out in my mind of the opportunity that I had to share with anyone um, I'm always looking for that opportunity however there's some things that happened this week um, that just uh, like for an example last night um, uh, my wife said that she heard a neighbor of ours just yelling and screaming at each other and hollering and and just profanities and very very angry you know and and this last week the, the people that I that I work with um, just you could feel a lot of tension in the air nobody was really upset with anybody but just a lot of tension in yep. the air you know because because people have a lot of there's a lot of of unrest yep. and uh, uncertainty yep. and you know, as I was going over this lesson, and those of you watching, you know, if, if you've looked at the lesson, but sharing the word, you know, how do we share with people mm -hmm. when we all come from different angles? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and the Bible can be many different things for many different people. For some, it can be corrective instruction. For some, it can be a new light that they've never seen before. Mm -hmm. For others, it, 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 it might be a burning fire that, that, that we read something and it gets into our minds and our hearts and we say, oh, I've, got to, I've, got to let the, I've got to allow God to change me. 
I, Lord, you've got to take this away from me. And probably the biggest thing that I kind of got from or picked up or, or re, you know, just re-solidified in my mind when I'm going through this lesson is we can't change ourselves. We need the Bible to change us. And the words of the Bible, the Bible is the word of God. That's how God communicates with us is through the Bible. Absolutely. You know, he gave that information to his writers and his writers put that down. The prophets wrote, wrote down. They were inspired. We've done, in past lessons, we've said how the, the word of God, the Bible is inspired by God. Amen. Every word is inspired. And yep. so, you know, we have to be studying our Bibles. And I think we really need to, when we share, we need to be pointing people to the Bible and not Absolutely. trying to sermonize so much. Sure. Absolutely. You know, not try to say, well, over here it says, but more of let people know that, you know, hey, I've had these feelings too. I've had the same feelings that you're having, the same uncertainties in the past. And I'm no longer afraid of the future. And here's the why because I study the Bible and the Bible gives me hope and it gives me peace and trust. And if someone says, well, what is there a particular part that you enjoy the more than the other? You can say, well, you know, I like, I like reading John or I like reading Mark or, or I like the Old Testament. I, I, I like reading uh, uh, Exodus where it talks about the children of Israel being led out of Egypt and bondage and how God took care of them night and day. And, right. you know, uh, that, that, that pillar of fire gave them gave him heat at night and air conditioning during the day. I mean, yeah. let's be realistic here. I mean, mm -hmm. God is a real tangible being. Sure. We are created in God's image. Absolutely. So, you know, sharing the word, this week's lesson, sharing the word. How do we share the word? Well, I want to start off with the memory text. It might give us a little bit of light. So our memory text comes to us from Isaiah 55, verse 11. And this, this version is from the New King James Version. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. I love how that's phrased there. This is God reaffirming that this is out of my mouth and it's for the purpose as I see it to be. And, it, and, and it's where it says, it shall not return to me void. In void. other words, God is saying here, I'm not just talking for my health. That's right. It's I real. expect results. It's real. You know, I expect results out of this. That's right. And so... God is all knowing, and so the stuff that He had, that is that He puts in the Bible for us, the information that's in the Bible for us, the correction and the direction and the light and so forth that each one of us needs at different times in our life, that's all there. And God knows mm -hmm. that this is what we need. That's why it says, "Will and shall not return to me void." That's right. So I have one little paragraph here that I want to read. Um, we're going to try and move a little bit. Further into the week, as far as the lessons go, because there are, uh, every week in this week's study is very important and um, pertains to what we're going through in these days. And I think it's important that we we allow the Spirit to move us, but also get a blessing. So we may stop and we may cover some areas. We just don't know. We we'll let the Holy Spirit guide us, and we never know, have an agenda. Either way, we thank <laughs> we'll God for we for get. the blessing. So. Um, here's, here's what I'd like to start, start off from, from Sunday. Okay. When we witness, we speak of Jesus, but what we know about Jesus without the Bible. In fact, how much would we know about the great controversy, the love of God, and the birth, life, ministry, death, resurrection, and return of our Lord if we did not have the scriptures? Hmm. Yeah. That's a great question. So, you know, I just want to throw that out there, give, give everybody that's watching right now out there at home, um, let's ponder that for a minute. Um, and then kind of as we're, Mike and I are going through the lessons and we're opening up God's word and we're, 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 we're going through the scriptures and trying to unpack these scriptures a little bit, 
we can kind of relate to this question and see how it fits. And I think the Spirit's going to guide us. Just yep, absolutely. Okay, for Sunday, Mike. Yeah, if you didn't believe in the Bible, what you just read, if you don't believe in the Bible, if you don't know the Bible, if you, what is there to live for? Absolutely. You know, eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow we, we die. You know, and I think the people that are so scared right now, the majority of them are those who really, really don't, maybe, maybe they don't truly 100% believe mm -hmm. that God is in control. Or sure. maybe they just don't know that God is in control. Because ultimately, what difference does it matter what happens to me here? Exactly. I mean, really. I mean, I've, I've come to that conclusion in the last, I don't know, three, four years over time. It's just more and more and more I've, I, I feel mm -hmm. like, what difference does my life make here? I mean, I, I, need, to, I need to do everything I can do to, to share God's word with people and to share the love of Jesus with people and the plan of salvation. But, you know, when God decides that he's done with me, so what? Don't, don't, don't cry over me. That's right. You know, because I'm, I'm looking forward to a better place. Absolutely. You know, it's just on that, um, the more and more I study and the more and more God gives me wisdom as far as, you know, we're, you know, God tells us we're only in the world. We're not of the world. We should be of the world. So yeah. we're only passing through because this isn't ultimately our home. That's right. You know, the more and more I study, the more and more I realize that everything that's worldly as far as my wants is empty. And, and it doesn't matter. We, we really don't, don't need it. I can't bring none of that with me. No. And even if I'm holding on to that and I'm found wanted, and then I risk the chance of having salvation in the first place. Yeah. So it's a lose-lose. Yeah. So... I'm happy and content with what God provides me. Right. Sure. Sometimes I do catch myself and say, oh, I like that truck over there. But then I ask myself, but do you need that do truck I need over there? need that new truck. No, you don't need that truck. That's and right. I give this you to you, Lord, to take away from me because I don't want it. Right. I have a truck that's paid off, and you provided this for me. And I am content Amen. with that. And I just pray, Lord, you keep my truck going. <laughs> And I will do my part Amen. if you help me do my part. And when it wears <laughs> out, then you worry about getting another right. one. Until and you'll then, provide. You know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really believe that God puts us here, mm -hmm. um, those of us that are Christians, that God allows us to continue to live, that he sustains us. Because if we are, if we are sharing with others, the devil wants us dead. Mm-hmm. He so, wants so far so the guardian from God. angels, I believe the guardian angels are around us even more so. The more that we want to share with others, the more that we want to um, um, honor God, the more guardian angels that God sends around us to protect us at all times because the devil wants us gone. And, and I believe, I truly believe that as long as God can use us, it doesn't matter how old or young that we are when, when we die. Mm -hmm. As long as God can use us while we're on this earth, he's going to keep us alive. And when he can't use us anymore, when our time is up, he's going to say, hey, it's, it's, time, it's time to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know, and, and let's not be all worried about what's going to happen, you know, with all of this, all of this pandemic stuff or whatever you want to call it going on. Mm hmm you know there's there's been there's been problems in the world all along and so we just have to we just want to continue to share god's words with people so let's get on with this symbols of god's word psalms 119 105 um i'm gonna go i'm gonna look that up and uh you can look that up too i have it right here okay 119 105 let's give our our watchers a chance to find it psalms 119 105 you know tim i gotta tell you a few days ago i had somebody call me and it was so exciting and uh i'm sure that uh you're going to be watching this and you know who you are <laughs> uh, but, uh, one of my christian brothers called me here uh he's a customer of ours and i've never even met him but he called me and he says thank you for doing these these uh, videos oh, amen and he says, my wife and I really enjoy hmm. doing these, watching these. And he says, I really appreciate that you give us time to look these Bible verses up. Oh, amen. So yeah. um, thank important. you for that comment. 
and again, you know, I, 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 I'm never going to embarrass anyone or call anyone out, but sure. I love comments. Yeah, many people that watch this know who you and I are personally. A personal comment, a comment in the comment section. Um, we're doing this because we want to be able to share and to reach out to others, and we want to make sure that we're making a connection with mm -hmm. you that are watching. Mm -hmm. So again, I appreciate that phone call. That was it was just so uplifting, and it just it made my day. It made Amen. my week. Amen. I was so excited. I also have a blessed story to tell, but it's it's a little detailed. So I'm going to wait towards the end. Okay. And what I would like to close out with the story. That sounds good. Okay. So we're at Psalms 119, verse 105. Mm -hmm. What do you got? Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path okay so that's telling me that some of us need a light sure you know some of us some of us just maybe we're caught in the darkness mm -hmm. maybe the this world is so closed in around us that we don't see any light in what's going on and if we read the bible it gives us hope it gives us mm -hmm. light mm -hmm. you know and it and so for some people some people that just don't have a way or haven't found the way, the path. Right. That's what the Bible can be for them. Right. For me, it's, it's you know, our hearts are, are evil continually. So as long as we have this word, we continually have a light to light our paths that remind us, uh-uh, you're starting to slide. You're starting us to, to slide back a little bit. And then this sheds light onto the matter for which might be bringing us back a little bit that stops it we re re repent from it and then we move forward in it that's right so that's that's how right I see it. moves us forward that's right you know shining with a, with a, with a, a light you know and sometimes sometimes we might want we might uh, find ourselves using an old flashlight and the batteries are getting weak and the lights doesn't shine so well Mm -hmm. Well, our spiritual life is like that too. You know, think of our spiritual life. Think of our our inner being as as being re, having rechargeable batteries. And sometimes we need to plug into God's word. We need to be plugging in to keep right. to stay to stay charged. To, so we've got that light That's right. that we can continue to see. The next one here, Jeremiah twenty three twenty nine. Um, uh, also, as a, a quote here on on what what the Bible is. What does it say there? It says. Uh, Jeremiah 23:29 says, "Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces?" Now that's pretty heavy there. Yes, that's, it is. That's pretty yeah. heavy. Is not my word like as a fire? Again, that's Jeremiah 23:29. If you're still looking for it, Jeremiah 23 verse 29, "Is not my word like a fire?" You know, I think I look at Christianity almost like when I weld. I do a fair amount of welding of steel. And when I'm welding, if I can turn that metal red hot on the opposite side of what I'm welding, if that metal is red on the bottom, let's say I'm doing a flat weld or vertical weld, it doesn't matter. If the other side of that piece of metal is red, and if my weld is smooth on the outside edges, not, not bubbled up, but smooth, chances are I have a very strong weld mm. and I have 100% penetration. Mm. And, and <laughs> so how does that, and, and, and so what do I need? I have to, in order to get that, I have to have enough heat. Sometimes, we feel like we're under fire. I know where you're going. Okay, so the, the word is like a fire. <laughs> yes. We feel, you know, sometimes we, we man, Lord, you know, I, I know I shouldn't have done that, or I know I shouldn't do this, and boy, I'm just struggling with whatever that, it, that we might be struggling with. Well, maybe God's lighting a fire under us. So if we feel the heat, that's a good thing, because that, that, that gives us a stronger bond between us and God. Mm -hmm. And how do I get that smooth weld? I get that smooth weld by working the stick, working the wire that I'm feeding it. If I'm using a wire feed welder, if I'm using a, a stick welder, I have to work that wire back and forth. 
well, that's the way my life is. It's not just stick it on there and go. I, mm. I have to, God's got to work with me. I've got to, there's things in my life that I have to be willing to let God take care of. And if that fire's burning hot enough, and if I work that stick, if God is the welder and he's welding me to him, connecting us, and he works that stick, he has enough heat, what happens to the slag? There is none. And what, what's the slag? The slag is impurities. The dross. They're dross. When you're welding, there is no strength in the impurities. There's no strength right. in the dross. There's no strength in the, in the slag. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, 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 anymore, I don't even own a slag hammer. Mm. Because when I weld, there's no slag. And how does that happen? By practice. Practice. Well, God's got thousands of years of practice on, 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 on mankind. Mm. So mm -hmm. when God welds, he's got to turn up the heat on us. He's got to work that metal. Mm -hmm. He's got to get that bond mm -hmm. deep and strong. Amen. And you so know, when, when I read this, like a fire, that's what I think of. It, and the, when you started going, I knew you, how, where you were going with this. But also it brought to mind, it kind of reminds me of the parable of the seed sower. Mm -hmm. You've got to prepare, prepare the, soil. the soil, right? Sometimes it needs an amendment because mm -hmm. the pH values might not be what it needs to sustain the growth and the fruiting part of that seed. That's right. So, you know, we, we want to work out all the impurities, right? So when we throw the seed, the impurities would be the types of soil yep. in my mind. You know, the rocky, the sandy, the brambles the perfect soil or the good soil and and how do you make perfect soil you make perfect soil by working it working it right by by adding things to it right and every year if you leave the roots in the ground because the roots draw all the nitrogen during the grow season if you leave the roots in the ground they decompose and put that nitrogen back into the dirt mm-hmm and then when you go into the springtime and you rework that soil now you're recultivating the nutrients in there mm -hmm. to allow the new fresh seed to come up year after year but after a while it will be depleted just like after a while if we stay out of god's word we become depleted That's right. the world takes over so sometimes we need a refreshing and get back to god and get back into his word yep so i only said that because i also realized that our next verse well but you, you didn't finish the the and it's like a hammer. Oh, it's like a hammer. You got a chip on your shoulder? You're gonna knock it off of there. Yeah. God's gonna knock that chip off. That's right. You know, the, the, the Bible, the Bible, sometimes we need a little chiseling. Oh, yes. <laughs> and that can be painful. That's right. You know, and um, sometimes, you know, to me, that chiseling is the Lord chastising us through something that we probably said or an action that we did, but but the chastising comes when the Holy Spirit brings to our recollection, hey, you know what? I probably shouldn't have said that. I really should have acted that way. Oh, man, I'm so sorry, Lord. I understand what I did was wrong right now, and I, I That's still the need hammer. Work. That's the hammer part of it. I still need work. Yeah. Thank you for showing me the areas that still need to be worked out. And it's painful. Yeah. Because you hurt the Lord. That's right. It's painful. Yep. What's the next verse? Luke. Luke 8, 11. Luke 8, 11. So I'm going to go to that. Luke 8, 11. Do, do you have it there? I do. Luke 8, 11. Let's give our viewers a moment to find that. Luke 8, verse 11. And it looks New like Testament. this one's going to actually go down think to verse 15 so it'll be luke 11 through 15 luke 8 11 through 15 okay um so luke 11 verse or 8 verse 11 now the parable is this the seed is the word of god yeah. oh. so and then 12 through 15 those by the wayside are they that hear then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. So key word here, believe that we are saved. Well, I got another little cross-reference to that too while you're there. Luke 11:28. I'll just toss this in. This is Jesus speaking. But he said, 
ye rather blessed are they that hear the word of God mm. and keep it. So it's more than just hearing. That's right. You have to keep it. We, we got to do something about it. That's action. Right? Do action. Right. I mean, we can hear all we want, but it, the, if it falls on deaf ears, which right. what are deaf ears? Deaf ears is I hear it, but I don't do it. Hey, honey, can you do the dishes? Yes, mom, I'll do the dishes. And then I'm, and then the kid goes out and plays. Yeah. Yeah. Saying one thing and doing another or not, right. or not hearing, hearing and doing another. Go ahead. All right, verse 13. They on the rock are they which, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and these have no root, which for a while believe, and in time of temptation fall away. In my Bible, temptation is also testing. So when we are tested, sometimes, like you said, if we don't act upon what we learn, then we sit idle, and then when we're tempted, then we fall away because we're not acting on the word. When we act on the word, then we're convicted, and there's a conversion process there. Yep. Converted to what we just learned is truth. Mm -hmm. You know, so <laughs> it's... <laughs> Verse 14, and that which fell among thorns are they, which, when they have heard, go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. Again, perfection in my Bible is harvest. And I think Jesus has another parable about concerning the harvest. That's right. And then verse 15. But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. Going back to what you just said. There's two words here, though. We have to keep it and have patience. So to relate this real quick. If we plant seed in our garden, right, we're the seed sowers. But do you and I go out there and make that seed crack? And do we make that seed open up and then start rooting and start drawing up the nutrients through the ground into how does that the root? Seed, how does the seed know which way is down? Because So God, that the root goes the right way. Right. So that somehow, I mean, God put it in that seed that that seed knows which way gravity is and think about that you look at a look at a at a at a corn corn seed when, when corn seed sends out a root and it sends out the stock mm -hmm. i used to grow a lot of a lot of corn and i check on my corn all every day and mm -hmm. when it started to crack i was so excited because now i knew it was going to be popping up and there's the root for the corn would come out of the seed and it would always go down, down. It, it never went up first and then go down it would come out and it go down, and then the stock would come right out next to it and start pointing up. The other thing about that—that that just too, happened, you know. That well, was the Big Bang theory there. <laughs> <laughs> so that root you're talking about is called the tap root. It's the bottom root that taps into the dirt, goes downward into the nutrients immediately. But the one thing that's that's different with corn than other plants is that there's a secondary root, and this is so. This is how good God is. He knows that that stock is going to grow up thick and tall. Mm -hmm. And that if there was no secondary root just under the surface, that it would not, that, that, that's your, your roots that hold for strength. In case a wind comes by, it's not going to blow that stock over because the secondary roots will actually anchor. So you and have those a are the secondary root? roots that actually you see out of the ground on the surface that that's actually right. come out of the stock. Yep come out and go down that's right but immediately it puts that like you said it puts the tap root down yep immediately yep and it's actually it's looking for nutrients and water that's right so and what is water in the bible it's the holy spirit so do we provide that no we just provide the seed so who who tells the the seed you can crack open now how who 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 grows that seed up into a plant who provides the sun who provides the nutrients well i think the big bang took care of all that <laughs> <laughs> it, 
It's God. <laughs> you think so? God provides I, all the needs. I think you're right. So I think you're right. Um, looking back on the parable here, we look and we see the different kinds of soil that I was just talking about That's related right. to your welding, that God knows what's right. God needs to work us, and we have to be willing to be worked. Exactly, but how do we know how to sow seed unless we read his word? Right. Had we not and read this, we would not understand that seed's not going to grow on rock. That also, that also is something that I have to remember, and you that are watching have to remember. Some of the seed that we cast out there, some of the seed that we spread is going to land on good fertile soil. Some of that seed's going to land on rocky soil, shallow soil. Some of it's not going to sprout at all. Some of it's going to sprout up and it's going to, then when the sun comes out, it, the moisture dries up, goes away, and that seed dries up and goes away. And we have to remember that, that when we're sharing the seed, when we're sharing God's word with people, when we're sharing God with people, not everybody that hears this word that we're sharing is going to take root. Mm -hmm. Let's not get discouraged. That's right. That's why this parable's here. That's right. That's the only reason that lets us know there is rocky ground. You know, our pastor said to me not long ago, he says, he says, uh, he says a third of the children in heaven wanted nothing to do with their, with their father. Now, if the most perfect parent that ever lived lost a third of his children, we as parents cannot let ourselves be discouraged if we lose one of our children. Now, we don't want that to happen. When I say, when I'm talking spiritually losing them, mm -hmm. you know, and so with the seed, and the rocky ground and the good ground. Even God lost a third of his seed, you might say. Mm -hmm. So let's not be, get discouraged when we're trying to share God's word. Let's keep on, keep on keeping on. You know, it, it only takes one, and we ain't going to know who we have affected until ourselves we get to heaven. We ain't going to know. That's a very profound statement, too. We don't know. We don't. But it's, can... it's not a prideful thing either. It's not a bragging rights. It's not anything like that. This is just a matter of salvation. Oh, God wants we're... us all to be saved. And so we have to do our part. If we're followers of Christ, we have to do our part yeah. and follow Christ and do as he wills. Because if he tells us to go here, we need to go here. We don't know why, but he does. And there's a reason. So right. we need to have faith that what we're doing is also for righteous sake. And when it says be patient, mm. that's not just patient for a day or two. You know, we, we ask no. God for something and then it doesn't happen immediately in two or three days. Lord, I need a new car. Lord, we need to sell our house. Sell our house for us. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I need some... I, I, We've got to come up with tuition money for our, our kids. Lord, send us some money. And it, and it doesn't happen. That's right. You know, the Bible tells us, ask and you shall receive. But that, and this week I realized 100%, it hit me. Ask in God's name what you shall receive. And when you ask in God's name, that's not saying, Lord, please give it to me. That is... If you ask what is good for you spiritually, you will receive it. Right. God doesn't care about monetary things. He doesn't care about the things of this world. Mm -hmm. But he cares about our salvation. Right. So what are we praying for? Are we praying for things that bring us closer to God? Or are we praying, in us, praying for things that are going to tie us down on this earth? Mm-hmm. Right. Anyway, let's move on. Where the clock is spinning on us here. Matthew four four. Matthew four four. You've got that mark too. Yes. 
All right, well, let's just wait a moment here. Give me a chance to find it. You said Matthew 4.4? Mm -hmm. All right, Matthew 4, and we give our viewers a chance to find it. Matthew 4, verse 4. Okay, I found it. But he answered and said, and this is Jesus speaking, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out the mouth of God. And you and I have already touched upon this, I think, a couple of times, just in this, yeah. this, this quarterly. Um, you know, so the question here is, is what five symbols are used to describe the word of God in these passages? Why do you think these five symbols were chosen to represent the word of God? Mm -hmm. So why, did Ma why, why is Matthew 4.4 4 there? What's the symbol here? That one, it is written, yeah. and that we shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. And if we're going to live on this earth for 70, 80 years, and it's over forever, is that living? But if we're going to live for eternity, is that living? Absolutely. That's living. Yep. So what living is he talking about? The living in Christ. And I just thought of this. What living, living, living in Jesus, living in Christ, living in God, that we would be safe to save, that we can truly live. Right. Because if we, if we go by what the whole Bible says, it leads us in conviction, it leads us in conversion, and ultimately will lead us into salvation, which salvation is eternal life. That's right. If we go by just bread alone, then we're picking and choosing as we see fit to facilitate our needs in this life. Well, you know what? That's not completely bringing me to Christ, and I'm not going to completely know Christ. When Christ says, away with you, for I not know you, that's not living. And that's 60, 70, life. 80 years on this earth, that's not living. No. Eternity. Eternity. Now that's living. Amen. That's living. Amen. So the Bible is the bread of God, is the bread of life mm -hmm. that we need in order to prepare us to live mm -hmm. through eternity. That's right. So uh, I have a, a paragraph here that kind of sums this up and pulls this question in the verses we just read kind of into perspective. So the varied symbols used in these passages describe some of the primary functions of the word of God. When we share the scriptures with others, it is like a light that illuminates life. Jesus the light of the world breaks through the darkness of their misunderstanding about who God is and the nature of his character. Minds darkened with a misunderstanding of God are illuminated by the Holy Spirit through the word of God. And so, you know, this kind of goes back to what you and I had a two-part discussion about the Holy Spirit, what, two weeks ago? Yeah. Well, here's another purpose that the Holy Spirit brings to us, too, to allow Jesus to be a light in our darkness. And I love that. Amen. Amen. The light of the world. Yes. Being plugged in. Yeah. That word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That's right. No questions asked. That's right. So real quick, this came to thought. So if this is a light... What is the fuel of this light? It's oil, right? Oil. And what is oil? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. We have to have the Holy Spirit in order for the light to burn bright. That's right. <laughs> I love That's these right. studies and I love right. doing this tapings because That's right. as we're doing this, you know, God's speaking through us as well. And the Holy Spirit moves upon us in ways that I don't even know when it's going to happen or how it's going to happen. But like right now, I, I, things are coming. So, amen. Well, and we don't. We don't. Let's just say it right now. We don't edit these 
this is not edited. This is not rehearsed. Rehearsed. By no means is it rehearsed. <laughs> Tim says, Tim says, well, Mike, you're ready. I says, yep, I'm ready. What are we going to study? What are we going to study and talk about? Well, let's just see where it goes. Let the spirit guide us. And we each study on our own time. And here we go. Here we go. <laughs> so, Amen. <laughs> let's move on. We're man, we're the, the, we're really burning up time here. I, um, I I was really hoping that we'd make it into Tuesday or Wednesday somehow. But well, I tried in the I, beginning. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, are we gonna are we gonna jump right off uh, uh, into Monday now? Well, you know, I could finish off with a question from Sunday, and it's on the bottom of your lesson. It's in the gray area. Um, the question is again: Think about the truths that we know only from the Bible. Key: Know only from the Bible. What should this tell us about how much we should treasure what it teaches us? So this is for deeper thought, thinking, um, ponder this, pray this. You know, seek seek God's wisdom and understanding on this, and I know for sh for a fact you'll receive some kind of blessing. I know I do. Yep. So, are we gonna go any more? Yeah, we can go into Monday. Let's go into Monday a bit. Actually, you know what? Uh, Where are you being guided? At some. Point? Let's jump into Tuesday. We've yeah, only got okay. about fifteen minutes. All right. And, Actually, uh, this is a good one. So let's let let's let's jump into Tuesday. Uh, the benefits of studying God's word. Mm. There are multiple benefits to studying the word of God. The Apostle Peter tells us that through the promises of Scripture, we become partakers of the divine nature. Second Peter one four, and James one twenty one says that James speaks of the implanted word, mm. which is able to save your souls. And then Paul in Acts 20 verse 32 says the word of his grace is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all who are sanctified mm. and sanctification is a work of a lifetime amen it doesn't happen when I'm baptized it doesn't happen when I when I uh, accept Jesus as my Savior sure. sanctification is something that doesn't end until Jesus comes in those clouds and he says, it's time to go back home. So I'm not once saved, once saved, always saved? You're not once saved, always oh. saved. I'm sorry. Because if you were, Satan wouldn't have never got kicked out of heaven. And Jesus wouldn't have Because he would again? have been saved. Did yeah. you ever think of that? I just happened to think of that. Yeah. Or Jesus wouldn't have to come back a second time. No, because we'd all be saved. It wouldn't matter. Mm -hmm. So why would he come back? And he's not going to come back to and land on this earth as, as is what is being told right now, right. which is a very popular teaching that is not biblical in any way, shape or form. It says he's going to come in the clouds and it says the trump of the Lord will sound and the dead in Christ shall rise. And Jesus first and Jesus is going to is, is going to raise everybody up and uh, and uh, the faithful ones are going to go back to heaven. And those that that were that that are not prepared in their lives to go to heaven they're going to die a second death mm. and through the millennium there's not going to be a thousand years of peace it's going to be a thousand years of desolation and nothing here and satan is going to be on this earth with his angels with no one to tempt and for a thousand years we're going to be in heaven we're going to have an opportunity to look at the books the record books of heaven and we're actually going to be putting god on trial based upon the, the records. And when it's all over, we're gonna say God is just. We'll be a jury of the peers. We will, we will, we will understand why grandma's not there, grandpa, brother, yeah. sister. We're gonna wonder ourselves, how, how, how come I'm, I'm here? We're gonna be able to read the books of remembrance. It's gonna say, you're here because of this and this and this and this. And we're gonna say, wow, heaven is cheap enough. So. That's another whole study, but I just had to throw that one in there Amen. just to get that in. Amen. So um, let's see here. Uh, let's see. Uh, where was the I Bible at? Has a redemptive. The Bible has a redemptive purpose. Seeing Jesus in all of Scripture, we are changed. By beholding him in his word, we become like him. That's mm. 2 Corinthians 3.18. So 2 Corinthians 3.18, again, I'll read it again, says that by beholding him in his word, we become like him. So Amen. how do I change my life? Bible study. Bible study. Bible study. I, I, my life cannot change without Bible study. Mm -hmm. It can't happen. 
God does it changing. We can't do it ourselves. It's impossible. That's right. The Bible is the only way that God can. I got to share something. This is going to be off the lesson, but it's going to be on the lesson. We may just have to quit right here when I'm finished and you've got something you want to share. So this morning, I, when I got up during my worship Amen. time, but during my worship time, I go onto the internet and I go onto YouTube and I type in Pope Sabbath. Do it. Pope Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And about the fourth or fifth one down came, uh, came up, the fourth or fifth item down came up and it says, preacher so-and-so has spent five hours talking to Jesus. I think I know which one you're talking about. And I clicked on that thing. I didn't. <laughs> I clicked on that thing. I thought, I got to hear what this guy's saying. And he gets on, and he's on there, and it's, 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 a, it's a televangelist preacher, and he's interviewing this guy that supposedly had had a five-hour talk with Jesus. And Jesus told him right out the beginning, he says, Jesus told me, it's okay. You Christians are doing okay. You've got nothing to worry about. You're doing a really good job. Don't worry about things. Everything's taken care of. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible tells us that they're going to be preaching peace and safety, peace and safety, and then sudden destruction. That's right. And so the televangelist that's interviewing says, oh, praise the Lord. That may, oh, praise the Lord. Oh, that makes me feel so much better. And he said, well, what else did Jesus tell you? Well, Jesus told me that, the, uh, that this virus is going to come back a second time and there's going to be a second wave. It's going to happen in about two months. Well, I could have told you that. All you got to do is listen to the news and the news people are telling you that. <laughs> and then he says... And then he says, yeah, and this next year they're going to be coming up with these old viruses. They're going, to be, they're going to be injecting old viruses into us, and they're going to be creating all these other problems. But that's okay. Don't worry about it. I've got your back. It's going to be okay because you're doing everything right, and you just don't need to worry. I've got you covered on this. And about that time, I said, I've seen enough of this. And so I hit the, do so I hit the off button. And I thought, no, I've got a comment. So I put a <laughs> comment on there. And it was very short and sweet. And I don't remember exactly what it said. But anyway, I put a little comment on there. And I thought, I hope somebody reads this and comments back. Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, that's not what the Bible says. My comment was basically this. I said, I said, um, I says, all you have to do is read the news, dot, dot, dot. Jesus doesn't care about conspiracy theories, <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Study your Bible. In fact, I think that's exactly what I said. So, you know, oh, and you know what, what it's about, I, I was dumbfounded. This thing came out yesterday, and there was over 400,000 watches, mm -hmm. views, over 400,000 views, and it came out yesterday. It's not too far off a topic. And what most, you're most people in their comments were saying, praise Jesus, praise God. This is wonderful. This is wonderful light. Mm-hmm. Satan wants us to believe that everything is status quo good. That's what this lesson is about. He, God wants us to study his word. He wants to change us. Mm -hmm. He wants to work within us. He doesn't want us, he doesn't want the status quo. If the status quo was okay, he'd have come back and taken us back to heaven. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Think about that. There'd be no reason. What, what, what would he be waiting for to take us back to heaven? That's right. He's waiting to take us back to heaven because he wants to save as many as he possibly can. And the world is going to become so ugly and so nasty and so degraded that it's going to be like the flood. There's going to become a point when evil would take over the whole world and that evil would snuff out anything that is good that's when Jesus is going to come back. Right. When there's no one else to save. Yes. 
That's right. But supposedly Jesus talked to this guy for five hours and told him that everything that the Christians are doing is just perfectly fine. And it goes back, okay, so, you know, when we look at Luke 8, 11 through 15, in the parable of the seed sower, when you have the fertile ground, in order for that seed to grow, you have to have good seed to begin with. You gotta have good seed, yeah, absolutely. But what we're seeing here is that a lot of people have a bag of bad seed and are just throwing it out there wherever it lands it's expected to grow unfortunately and is the seed people or is the seed faith um so it's faith depends on what your the faith seed is, is the What's seed is faith what do you believe in the seed is faith does our faith root into solid ground yeah nope. or does our faith root into shallow gravel It's faith. The seed is, is faith. Right. When, I mean, because I can't plant a soul. No. But I can plant a hope by mm -hmm. sharing. You can plant a hope by sharing with someone. Mm -hmm. It is sharing hope. Mm -hmm. But seed can also be truth and non-truth. Correct. So if we're throwing out all of this bad seed of non-truth. But non -truth, it can be tainted hope is what you're exactly, saying. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Good word. Yeah. Go ahead. If we're throwing out all this bad seed of, of non-truth, you're going to get somebody that's going to that that's seeking. And some of it's going to take root, and they're going to believe it. Exactly, and they're going to start off with the bad habits, bad doctrine, non-truth, false hope, and then what happens when this individual realizes? I've been misled. That's right. I don't want nothing to do with this anymore. It throws, and, and this is the devil. This is, this is how Satan is working. And this is exactly what Satan wants. And these end days, and these times that we're in, he wants to make sure that he's going to separate us as far as he can from God. He doesn't want us to know the truth. He'd rather right. us have false truth. And, and he wants us sleeping like the foolish virgins. Sleeping. That's right. The, 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 ten, the five wise and the five foolish. So, glad you brought that up because I just learned something from God the other day. That when Jesus told the apostles, come with me, when he was in Gethsemane, he went to go pray that night. Peter fell asleep. And he went and prayed and he came back. What, you could not stay awake for one hour? Yeah. This is the sleeping church. Jesus and what is the is, church? The, the church is people. People. The people are asleep and they're not doing what it takes for us to draw closer to God. We're sleeping and we know that idleness is the devil's playground. So the, so the devil is going to plant, if we're going to, if we're going to use the gardening synopsis here, that, you know, what's the other parable? They came in and said, Master, Master. Somebody's come in and, and, and put bad seed, or, and the weeds are growing up. Weeds are growing. And so he says, that's okay. Don't pluck them. Let them grow up together. That's right. And then we'll separate them in the harvest. That's right. So that's what we're seeing here, and this is what's going to happen. That's right. And unfortunately, and the, the, uh, the bad thing about this is, is that as you and I are trying to work hard to sharing God's word, which we're studying right now, God has allowed us to have this platform to share the truth, to plant the good seed, and we pray that this good seed is going to land on fertile minds and that, that, that God will have a chance to come in and work and produce a good, viable fruit. That's your actions. That's what we say. This is the character of Jesus. But when you have somebody throwing bad seed that's going to come up and be a weed false truth it's very difficult for mike and i to come across to anybody who's new here especially those of you that are watching for the first time it puts doubt in your mind and who's right who's telling the truth Sorry. but again this is a deception that is going to that's already spraying like wildfire but it's it's taking off right now 
And it doesn't matter what it is. It's still false, and it's still a separation from God. Well, but we know a small remnant's going to be saved, so there's hope in that, and I praise God for that. I watched it this morning in less than 24 hours. Over 400,000 people have watched that video. Most of the most, there was a thousands of thumbs ups. There was only a couple hundred thumbs down. And the comments was, amen, brother, preach it. So I'm going to say this, and this isn't and, out of pride, and I don't care. I do care for the saving of souls and, and helping God do his will, but how many, what's the highest views we've had since you and I have been doing this? I think, what, 82 or something like something that? Something like that. Close, we're close to 100 now. Compared to 4,000 in false truth. No, 400,000. Okay, wow, well, okay, 400,000 to our 82. Do you think there's a remnant there? It just, to me, it's just God is showing us. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's only one. That's right. The heaven, heaven rejoices when one is saved. That's right. Amen. So. <laughs> no, the truth is, the truth is, is that we have to be reading the Bible. Yes. We cannot assume that we're ready for translation. We, and that's, that's what this preacher was saying. He was saying, Jesus says, it's okay. Every, you're doing just fine. It blew my mind mm -hmm. when I saw that. That's right. And that is not what the Bible says. Jesus said that Satan is going to plant the, plant the, the, the tares with the wheat. Gee, he's, that's, that's the parable you were talking about. That was Satan coming along and planting, planting false hope and planting false dreams and false ideas of, of God and religion. And, and then people grow up in the idea that, that it's okay, I can do whatever I want. I'm going to be saved and you know and this just, we have to have a relationship with Jesus and yep. the only way we're going to get it is through studying the Bible and reading and studying the Bible and prayerfully studying and praying is going to change us it's going to change me it's going to change you it's going to change you and so with and this we don't have to make the change God sure. will change us if we allow him to work with us so we the, can't do it on our own. The Spirit just brought this to me right now. See, had this not come, I would not have this understanding. But if you look in Eden at the tree of knowledge of good and evil, when the serpent of Satan came down and told Eve, surely you could be like God. Go ahead and eat this. It's okay. Okay, so in that bad fruit, What's in that bad fruit? A seed. Right. He took that seed and he planted that seed in Eve. And that seed now has produced many, many, many different generations of bad seed through bad fruit. When God said all you had to do is eat from this tree or any other tree except this one. It started in Eden. It started in Eden. Thou shalt not surely die. You will be as wise as God, knowing good and evil. In other words, I don't need the word of God. Mm -hmm. I don't need God at all because I am smart. And if you eat what I'm eating, then you will be smart and you will know the difference from good and evil. And that's all that is necessary. Not <laughs> knowing they weren't smart at all. So Deception. <laughs> The different from the different days this week, if you don't have a quarterly, on Sunday was symbols of God's word, which we studied that. Monday, the creative power of God's word. And we know how that happened, that God created this this earth just in his his words. Right. Speak it. That was God's God's spoken word. Um, Tuesday, the benefits of studying God's word. Well, we've talked about that. Uh, Wednesday, applying God's word. I think we've covered that pretty well. Mm -hmm. applying God's word what do we do about God's word and then sharing the word we've talked about sharing the word yep. so actually you know I think we've done a pretty good job of this week of actually we talking actually, about all of the different topics here yeah. and uh, it really boils down to uh, we have to remember that that the Bible the Bible has different ways of teaching us some of us it's a light some of us it's for correction some mm -hmm. of us 
are in the dark and we don't even know that there's a God. That's right. Uh, you know, some of us, uh, maybe we've been born and raised going to church all of our lives and reading the Bible, but, and, and we've got preconceived ideas, but God's got to shape us. He's got to get out that hammer yeah. and, 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 and chisel. chisel it. And he's got to break away some of those things that have been in our lives for a long time, even though we know what's good or bad. Right. You know, yeah. so another quick parable that bring comes to mind from what you just said is that Jesus is the potter. The, amen. When we yes. are full of sin and in the world before we come to Christ, we are an earthen vessel. Right. God formed us from the earth. We have now become an earthen vessel of clay, but when we are born, we are a fresh vessel that knows nothing of this world until the, we're, we keep getting molded and molded, and as we grow up and we grow up, finally we get to a point now the world takes over, and so we are now this grown-up, hardened vessel that had been molded through childhood and to adulthood. And we have to go through a, 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 a killing, too. That's right. We've got to be hardened, go through the heat. So when the world gets a hold of this vessel, us, it fills it with what it wants. And that could be anything that, that is right. not of God or a higher place. But when we choose to come to God, God takes that hammer, breaks that vessel, and through baptism forms us back into the vessel God wants us to be, and then we are filled with the water of life to be poured out whom he chooses to pour out. And that's why the Bible says he is the potter and we are the clay. Amen. Amen. He has to work us. That's right. So my, I got a quick story real quick. It's, it was truly a divine moment. I was at work. I had to stand the door watch for mandatory mask, uh, people coming into our, the store I work at for wearing mandatory mask. And I was there from nine o'clock to 11, which 11 o'clock we closed the store. And um, a woman walked by and <laughs> when I get people walking by with no mask, I have to, I, I, get, to, I, I get to a place where I'm like, should I say something or should I just let her go? But because I work there and I'm a manager, I have to enforce the rules because I had to sign this thing. So I was like, ma'am, may I offer you a mask? And she goes, um, I, I have health conditions. Well, automatically, I'm okay with that because I'm not going to force something on somebody that has a health condition. Right. You know, I, I, I figure I could probably get some grace out of that decision than just letting them go. So... After she came back through and was leaving, she stopped. I had no idea what was about to happen, but she goes, do you believe in God? And I was like, yes, ma'am. And she goes, I do too. What do you think about this mask? And so I, you know, I, I gave her what I thought, and um, then it, it turned out to be a half an hour discussion standing there talking about God, and she's a Sunday goer, God bless her, and, you know, she's a sister in Christ, and she kept asking, like, I, I started noticing after the third question, these are, she's asking all of the right questions, and I'm like, oh, Lord, you planned this right now, mm -hmm. and she asked what denomination I belong to, and I told her, and she goes, aren't they like Jehovah's Witness? And I say, actually, no, we're not. We are total polar opposite of Jehovah's Witness. And so we got in a little discussion about that. And, she, and then um, later through the discussion, she, she goes, so what is a Seventh-day Adventist? And I said, okay, well, it's in our name. Um, we believe in the Seventh-day Sabbath that God created in Eden mm -hmm. for all of mankind. You might hear that it's the Jewish Sabbath or it's for the Hebrews or whatever, but you got to remember that there were no Jews at that time in the beginning in the garden. God said it was for all people. And so there was no Jews yet. 
when this came about, when the, when the Jews were liberated from Egypt and were spent 40 years in the desert with Moses, it wasn't until then Moses was directed by God to bring forth, remember, I have a Sabbath. This is going to be my covenant between me and my people. And the thing is, is that when, when people read that part of the verse of me and my people, they automatically assume it's for the Jews. For a moment in time, it was, but you got to remember that we are grafted into the vine, and Jesus is the root. So because we are grafted in, we are now become spiritual Israel. Mm -hmm. Because we're spiritual Israel, no matter if we're Jew or Gentile, if you follow Christ, you still have to keep his commandments because it was made for all mankind. And so she's like, she was like captivated. She was totally silent. She was just like, I've never heard that before. That's cool. And I said, well, I talk about the truth and the truth only. So I, I implore you, please search the scriptures and prove me wrong. And please, the next time I see you, let's have another little discussion about this. And I said, I will pray that the Holy Spirit will fill you with wisdom and guidance and put you in a place where you and your heart can truly trust that what you're learning is real. I said, I used to believe what you believe, but it got to the point that when I started hearing things from that pastor and I started writing down the verses that he was going off of, and I would go home and look at my Bible and realize that's not what he's talking about. No. I had to walk away from the church. But when I walked away, I walked away for 10, 11 years, and the world took me back. And I needed to be saved. And it took my mom dying to make me realize I need God. And That's I told right. her, and here we are right now. That's right. Amen. So. Thanks for sharing. I, we're completely out of time. Will yep. you pray for us? Absolutely. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that you brought us together. We thank you for the new visitors that may be watching and those that are part of this church family or those that are part of this faith at home watching. We ask that the Holy Spirit bring them a blessing and that um, the Spirit will move upon their hearts and bring them into a condition where they will allow the Holy Spirit to lead them closer to God, to lead us closer to you, O oh Lord. This is our prayer, and we thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And thank you for joining us, and please share this. Amen. Leave a comment. We read them. <laughs>